Hey, it's Huck. And I don't know why anyone should be surprised. I mean, anyone who was paying any attention at all during the debates over the Patriot Act, both when it first passed under the Bush administration and then subsequently under Obama, really shouldn't be too surprised at the information coming out now of this expansive scope of NSA intelligence gathering, including virtually all U.S. phone records and internet communications involving at least nine of the World Wide Web's most trafficked domains. And while I know there are no shortage of shit-for-brains members of the House and Senate, particularly on the Republican side of the aisle, it has been fascinating to watch members of both parties jockeying for position on this. Some, incredibly, feigning they had no idea of the scope of this. And while it is true that NSA Director Mr. Clapper lied to a direct question posed by Democratic Senator Ron Wyden during a Senate oversight hearing, denying that the records of millions of Americans were being accessed, Wyden, I'm guessing, knew better all along. But doubtless, millions of Americans, at least, are finding out for the first time just how far our government is willing to go to track down terrorist suspects and their plots to do harm. And the arguments on both sides are compelling. This is certainly not the first time during wartime that an American administration has skirted the Constitution in an attempt to keep Americans safe. Lincoln did it repeatedly, most famously when he suspended habeas corpus, interring folks without charge and denying them their constitutional right to a fair trial against known charges. Franklin violated the Constitution as well, rounding up men, women, and children of Japanese descent for the duration of World War II. And George W. Bush, to his discredit, launched this whole NSA operation before even asking Congress to sanction it. And while the Patriot Act has been passed and reauthorized by Congress since that time, giving the NSA operation the illusion of legitimacy, many legal scholars argue that despite its passage, the NSA operation is nevertheless a violation of the Constitution's First and Fourth Amendments as the ACLU is charging in court this week. After all, just because a group of lawmakers agree on something and vote for it and a president signs it into law, doesn't mean the courts will find it constitutional. Perhaps the greatest service Edward Snowden, the NSA leaker, has provided Americans is that finally it is likely the courts will have to cast judgment on this whole affair. Not that they always get it right, however. For most of us, I suppose, how we feel about this may come down to how strongly we come down on the civil liberty versus keep us safe argument. And I know friends of mine who say they have no problem with it since they're doing nothing wrong to trigger anything that they personally should have to worry about. But there are just two problems with that thinking. One is the Constitution. And the other is just how this whole NSA operation is operating and how many people are involved. When Edward Snowden decided to blow the whistle on just what the NSA is doing, he said he came forward because he did not want to live in a country where such violations of civil liberties occurred. And while many might agree with that assessment, even hail Mr. Snowden's actions as heroic. What bothers me is how this illustrates just how slippery a slope this can be. Because Mr. Snowden is just one of nearly a million people in this country with high security clearance. Nearly half of that million, including Mr. Snowden, do not even work directly for the NSA, the military, or the federal government, 
but for a private company contracted with the government to screen and analyze this data. Data involving the internet use and phone records of virtually every American citizen. Mr. Snowden's beef was with the civil liberty aspect of the program, but what if his beef was with the crime in his neighborhood? Dope dealers, for instance. And he decides to anonymously leak information directly involving those activities to the local police. Or what if he was a Tea Party enthusiast who stumbled upon something salacious involving some pundit or politician on the left? What if someone right now has reprogrammed his or her data mining program to include sifting out something or someone that has nothing to do with national security, but instead a personal or political cause they feel strongly about? We would never know where the information came from, most likely. Just a tip to a reporter, maybe a policeman, maybe a special interest group. And here's a guy you should be watching. Vigilantes working inside the most extensive data gathering operation ever constructed on Earth. Not a pretty picture. So, is Edward Snowden a hero or a traitor? I, for one, I'm glad Mr. Snowden came forward. It's a debate we need to have. But however you feel about liberty or safety, it seems clear this program involves more data gathering than is constitutional. It involves more people on the gathering end than is manageable. It includes suspect congressional oversight and a judicial review process that is withheld from public scrutiny. That said, Mr. Snowden needs to be prosecuted, if only because the next leak may come, if it hasn't already, on the basis of a much more nefarious purpose. And we should not let that happen. I'm Huck. That's my opinion. What's yours?